straight ahead in this week's Working Woman Report. They were longtime friends and devoted New York City sample sale shoppers. Find out how these two savvy shoppers created a revolutionary way for millions of people to buy designer brands at a fraction of the price. Plus, we'll introduce you to the professional soccer player turned entrepreneur whose goal is to build a team of products that improve women's health. And she's creating an empire by matching top babysitters with families who expect nothing less than the best. What's your idea? If you're ready to change your life and start making your passion work for you, listen up. The Working Woman Report is here to help, and it starts right now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Allison Hans. Our first two working women are the epitome of what it means to be successful. The dynamic duo teamed up to create the uber-popular online sales site, Gilt.com. The company's e-commerce business model sells luxury products and services between a 36- and 48-hour period. So if you have good taste but you need a good deal to fit your budget, get ready to shop guilt-free with Gilt Style. The top fashion designs, once thought out of reach for anyone other than the rich and famous, until one company came along and changed everything. The Guild Group, a guilt-free way to shop online and get the hottest fashions in the world, according to co-founders Alexis Maybank and Alexandra Wilkes-Wilson. Guilt.com provides access to luxury lifestyle brands from around the world at amazing insider prices. Those prices oftentimes 60 to 70 percent off, which means customers can buy designer wares like Versace or Oscar de la Renta without breaking the bank. On a daily basis, we have nearly 200,000 people shopping in in virtually the same moment to shop from our sales. With thousands of Gilt members flocking to the website each minute, it would appear the Gilt group has been around for a long time. But Alexis tells us that's not the case. Founded in 2007, the company skyrocketed to success as it was the only website of its kind to give low-cost access to the hottest designer lines. The idea really came out of a personal hobby that uh, my co-founder and Alexander and I had, which was shopping sample sales here in New York City. These coveted New York City designer sa sales that you really fought to get access to. And it formed the inspiration for how we went about pursuing this idea, creating an environment online for the sale of these highly coveted designer brands in a way that generated a tremendous amount of excitement. Alexis also tells us about the first time they realized the Gilt Group would be a phenomenon. We had 40,000 women try to buy the exact same single pair of shoe, and it was and one of those moments where you watch your, your startup kind of grow, grind to a halt as it has this influx of, of activity. But that moment we realized we really have to invest the infrastructure even more and be able to scale even faster. A business that 90 minutes a day does about 70% of its revenues. Further proof that Gilt.com is now a household name. The business model for this e-commerce behemoth is pretty simple. Gilt buys the items up for sale at an extreme discount from the vendors. Then Gilt adds a margin on top of the discounted price to make a profit. So how do you get in on the amazing deals? You have to sign up for a membership. The good news is that it's free. All you need is a valid email address. For more information on Gilt Group, simply head to our website, workingwomanreport.com. Now, while Gilt is an e-commerce goliath, there's still room in the marketplace for up-and-coming online retailers. According to recent figures from Mashable, Americans spend between $1,200 and $1,300 on online purchases every year. So if you want to get in on the action, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, you need to decide how to sell your products online. You may want to consider existing online marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Store Envy. Each offers easy-to-use and fast, established networks and platforms for startups. Second, you need a solid plan for shipping and packaging. Set up business accounts with freight providers. Decide if you'll offer a flat fee or shipping or provide options like certified or next-day delivery. You should also calculate your packaging costs 
and decide how much of that you want to incorporate into the shipping fees paid by your customers. Finally, avoid trouble with the IRS and research whether you need to charge state and local sales tax. You can learn more about tax laws by visiting the Small Business Administration's online business law section. Of course, you can always find information on our website, workingwomanreport.com. Shifting gears, our next working woman is trying to corner the market when it comes to a service most parents will turn to at some point, babysitting. Here's a look at how her company works to create perfect matches between college students, young professionals, and families who need an extra hand on deck. Vanessa Washoff has been babysitting since she was 13 years old. By 15, she was a camp counselor during the summer. But it wasn't until she moved to New York City at the age of 21 that she realized babysitting, and more specifically, the business of babysitting, could translate into big bucks. My mom is an interior decorator, and she gave me the idea to start um, babysitting for her clients, and the next thing I knew, I was booked around the clock. So booked that she couldn't handle all the babysitting gigs coming her way. So she started recruiting friends and friends of friends, all recent college graduates and or young professionals with experience in child care who wanted to supplement their salaries in the big city. It was very easy to recruit, you know, friends and family who I really knew and trusted in the private households we were working with. And we've built our company off of that trust. Sensible Sitters, which has been in business for eight years now, services more than 4,000 families. While the company is headquartered in Manhattan, they also service Atlanta, Palm Beach, Los Angeles, Denver, and San Francisco. The idea is to have a child, uh, a child minder or a babysitter who's really engaged with their child in a meaningful way and can bring a learning experience to the sitting session. Parents told Vanessa what they wanted and she delivered. And what it was was a sitter who could help with homework, navigate the transit system, email or text with them and keep them up to date. The company keeps a credit card on file and they invoice you at the end of each week. There's an annual membership fee of $150 and then the sitters are booked with rates beginning at $20 an hour with a three hour minimum. It's an added bonus for families to be able to travel with a sitter who has a passport, can pack their bags, you know, with a bit of notice and go away with them. Somebody who swims or drives or skis, depending on where you're going. Not a bad gig for the sitters, all independent contractors, and not a bad assignment for this boss to send them on. I love everything about being a business owner. I mean, I'm a real people person, and I think it's so fun to not only get to know all of our families intimately, but to get to know all of our sitters. I find them really inspiring. For parents who need a guaranteed booking, Vanessa's company requires 24 hours notice, but they always do their best to help clients with last minute needs. If you'd like to learn more about whether sensible sitters could be a good fit for your family, just check out our website, workingwomanreport.com. There's lots more to come on this edition of the Working Woman Report. Need more time to tweet to build the buzz about your business? We'll introduce you to the woman who can help. Plus, she's made it her business to empower women around the world. We sit down with Elizabeth Gore, the resident entrepreneur at the United Nations, who believes social entrepreneurship is the key to saving lives. Stay with us. I got into business as a hobby. I wasn't really thinking seriously. I said, somebody needs to teach me so I don't go bankrupt. So I went to a store and I met Terry. I talked to her about my party business. This woman understand what I'm saying. There are people with amazing knowledge right there and free. My table linen entertained the first lady and the Russian first lady. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Get your free business mentor at score.org. Welcome back to the Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. Our next working woman is, in a word, fantastic. As the resident entrepreneur at the United Nations Foundation, Elizabeth Gore is responsible for building global partnerships to support the UN's humanitarian campaigns. She believes social entrepreneurship can change the world, especially when it involves investing in our greatest assets for the future, girls and women. You have that ability to change somebody. And if we all embody that in ourselves, just think about what we can do. Wise words from Elizabeth Gore, 
the resident entrepreneur at the United Nations Foundation. Once a small town girl from Texas, now an advocate for women's rights and social justice. So now my mission in life at the United Nations is to give other people the opportunity to be instigators. Elizabeth frequently tours on behalf of the UN, speaking about her travels around the world and encouraging future generations to develop an active role in social entrepreneurship. We really are feeling that entrepreneurs have the ability to save lives through their own business. So if you can think about the next Facebook, the next widget, the next invention, all of that could come in and actually impact humanitarian issues. By fostering cooperation across UN agencies and creating connections between private businesses, Elizabeth believes we can all have a great sociological impact around the world. But to gain that connectedness, we must keep investing in the future, specifically the future of women and girls. Well, I think investing in women and girls is, is our best investment. So if you're looking for an ROI or, or your best bet, it is women and girls. Um, you know, women entrepreneurs or anyone who owns an income, whether it's here or in developing countries, we usually give 90% of it back into our communities and growing and bettering our communities, whereas men is about 35%. On the flip side, girls, um, every year that they are educated more, and this is just primaries, this is K through six, 20% more income is what they gain as they get older. Elizabeth tells us the most important thing isn't always focusing on building up ourselves. Sometimes it's giving back instead. In turn, we may find a better sense of self and help create a stronger community. If you're looking at the right thing to do versus just a great investment versus who are the most bright, inspiring people I've ever seen, it's girls. For more information on Elizabeth and the wonderful programs that are taking place with the United Nations Foundation, simply visit our website, workingwomanreport.com. Well, Gore is part of a growing group of change makers blazing a trail in social entrepreneurship. Whether they're launching programs to empower young girls, bringing fresh water to remote areas of the world, or raising money for cancer research, these leaders are driven by a passion to improve the world around them. Our next working woman is definitely doing her part to better the lives of those around her. She's a former professional soccer player who not only created a healthy lifestyle drink specifically for women, she's joined in a partnership with an organization that focuses on improving the lives of young girls around the world. We're used to seeing sports drinks commercials like this one with a masculine undertone. Each colorful drink is expected to get you rejuvenated and back in the game. But what if you're a woman looking for something else? something more natural and a bit less testosterone driven. And as a woman, you have different nutritional needs than men. That's where Rue comes in. Rue, a unique name with a holistic look at women's nutrition. Rue means woman in Afrikaans, and it uh, comes from my experience over in South Africa. A lifelong athlete and soccer player, Catherine says she was searching for a beverage that could outshine the other multivitamin drinks on the market and specifically target women. The product itself is a nutritional, nutrient-enhanced beverage that contains many essential vitamins and nutrients for women. And it contains 20% up to 100% of your recommended daily intake of 12 essential nutrients. So that's, you know, for example, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, folic acid. To find out exactly which nutrients were most essential, Catherine traveled around the world visiting different communities and learning what's most vital to women's health. From there, she expanded her idea from a sports drink to creating an overall healthy lifestyle for women on the go. We're really trying to create a women's health brand. And as much as our first product is a beverage, you know, we really want to create a, a brand that is all about health. And health to us is more than nutrients. It's more than working out. It's a lifestyle and a mentality. Catherine tells us after years as a professional soccer player, she transitioned to a finance job. During that time, she says she had a tough time finding products that would give her the nutrients she needed day in and day out. Once the idea of Rue came to mind, she spent several years teaming up with doctors and nutritionists. 
The idea was to create a product that would simplify a woman's life so she could become the healthiest version of herself. We felt that there was a huge opportunity to create this brand that women could connect with, um, provide innovative products, but the products had a bigger, broader you know, m message and mission behind it, which was to empower women to be healthy, to you know, pursue their passions in every facet of life, and not necessarily succumb to a lot of the negative societal pressures that women and girls often face. The program Catherine supports is called Girls on the Run, the nonprofit program uses running as a source of empowerment for young girls, as a way for these future leaders to change the way they see themselves and their opportunities. You can find more information about VRU, Girls on the Run, and other companies and programs aimed at empowering women by visiting our website, workingwomanreport.com. Well, if you're thinking about joining the social entrepreneurship movement but don't know where to start, check out Plum Alley. It's a virtual one-stop shop where women entrepreneurs and innovators can succeed with help from crowdfunding, commerce, and expert advice. The site's founder says the platform is a game changer because it allows women entrepreneurs to actually test products in the market before they decide to launch their idea. I founded my company, I realized with the power of the internet, you can connect with so many amazing women out there, women entrepreneurs. You can tell their story, you can give a chance to actually profile female founded companies and their products because once you know not only the woman who's founded the company but what was her vision behind the product, it makes that product that much more special. For more information about how Plum Alley's resources can help you branch out into the world of social entrepreneurship, just log on to our website, workingwomanreport.com. When we come back, want to build buzz about your business but don't have the time to tweet and make it happen? Meet the woman who can help. And we'll cook up some tasty treats with one dynamic woman who's dancing all the way to the bank. Stay with us. For us, what we've really focused on presenting to everyone we meet, including our target users, but also potential investors um, and partners, is all about putting it in the form of defining the question, defining the problem, and defining ourselves as the solution. And, and that was a question that we asked ourselves before we marched down a path of actually seeking um, fundraising. It was really trying to narrow down, what are we solving for? What is the problem? And is this problem actually relevant and of interest to women? You're watching The Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. If you're struggling to find that work-life balance, it may seem impossible to find enough hours in the day to get on social media and promote your business. Guess what? Help is here. We've all heard of ghostwriters helping authors bring their books to life. Our next working woman launched that concept into cyberspace by building a business of ghosts who will take those daunting social media posts off your busy hands. With billions of people worldwide using social media sites like Twitter and Facebook, it's no surprise social media advertising is sweeping the internet. But with more and more websites connecting us, updating your status, posting to Instagram, communicating on LinkedIn, it can all be exhausting and extremely time consuming. That's where Nika Stewart comes in. We are a social media done for you company. So rather than strategizing and, and coaching, we come up with a strategy for, for entrepreneurs and thought leaders and then run with it. So do it for them. Nika tells us her team can help just about anyone become a social media rock star and develop a celebrity status. Many of our clients are uh, I say thought leaders, coaches, uh, speakers, and authors, people who have a message that they want to share with the world to make the world a better place. And we help share their message with, with tweets and Facebook posts and on groups and LinkedIn and through pictures. If you're not ready for a ghost just yet, Nika has a few tips to set you in the right direction. First, she suggests posting updates about your company at least three times a day. Nika also encourages cross-promoting between your social media sites. And finally, write down your business goals and clearly communicate those goals to your followers. The evolution of several of my businesses have been that I did things that worked for me and then I taught other people how to do them 
And then some people said, okay, you taught me how to do it, but I still don't want to do it. Can you just do it for me? Nika offers her top three tips for being social media savvy. Number one, she says the best way to get more attention is to give some to others. You can do this by sharing blog posts, retweeting content, and staying engaged. Number two, be consistent with your brand. Make sure everything you post is in alignment with your brand philosophy and style. And finally, make sure your profiles are complete and include strong solutions. To learn more tips and to learn more about Nika's ghost tweeting business, just visit our website, workingwomanreport.com. The idea for our final entrepreneur's business was born amid the elaborate feathers and elegant flourishes of a Manhattan ballroom dance studio. When she realized the post-lesson dessert table was lacking, she stepped up to the plate, the cake plate that is, and created a booming baking business. Each week at her dance social at Dance Times Square in Manhattan, Sherry would eye the dessert table with foodie dismay. She felt that Shall We Eat was not exactly living up to the promise of Shall We Dance. So she started bringing her own mini cakes to the social, and they were a big hit. Soon, she was selling the cakes to family and friends. I want cupcakes to rule the world. I want my shortcakes to rule the world. Um, part of what I love about it is they're, they're beautiful as well as healthful and tasteful. Um, I, I love doing gift boxes. I always loved wrapping. Um, I just love beautiful things. And there's no doubt the shortcakes are beautiful. Each one is painstakingly handmade with Sherry's special touch, right down to the gold glitter sprinkled on top. But there's also something extra special about these cakes. They're made from all natural ingredients. In fact, they're vegan. What does it mean to be vegan? Vegan means there are no animal products. No eggs, no cream, no butter. And this is all vegan? All vegan. Sherry found her luxurious vegan desserts to be so popular with her fellow dance friends and family that she decided to start selling her cakes to individual clients, salons, and fitness spas, where she's now doing steady business. And these are my decadent dark chocolate with vanilla icing and a chocolate sauce drizzle and a dollop of raspberry guava jammy, which we make also in our kitchens. And speaking of kitchens, where to cook was one of the first obstacles Sherry encountered when she launched her business a year and a half ago. In New York, you can't legally bake out of your home, so she had to find a place to cook and get the business up and running. We take it out of the oven, we let it cool. Enter fellow female entrepreneur Trisha Rago, owner of New York City Kitchen Incorporated. She offers daily rentals of commercial kitchen space for budding bakers and cooks like Sherry. Rago says she's seen a huge jump in the number of people looking to rent space and to start their own food business, especially women. I just think that, you know, what's been happening with the economy being as bad as it has, it has been for the last few years, women are leaving their jobs and they're saying, okay, so what can I do on my own? And we know how to bake, we know how to cook, you know, we know how to do those things, and so let's make it into a business. Rago provides more than just commercial kitchen space. She's also a food consultant who will help budding entrepreneurs meet all of the city's regulatory guidelines for cooking and operating a food business, which can prevent some major headaches down the road. My advice to someone who wants to start their own business would be uh, don't be afraid, or be afraid and do it anyway. Um, be smart about it, be methodical, but don't give up. If it's something you really love to do, there's a way to do it. And if you want to get into the baking business, you can rent a commercial kitchen by the hour in most major cities. But don't forget to contact your local health department for specific rules and regulations in your area. For more information on Sherry Shortcakes, log on to our website, workingwomanreport.com. Well, that wraps up this edition of the Working Woman Report. Along with checking out our website, be sure to connect with us in the social media world. You'll find us on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. Tune in next time for more inspiring tips and ideas by our fantastic women. Who knows? Maybe you're next. See you then.